Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Felis and in today's video, we'll be diving into one of the most powerful tools in modern Python development, which is working with APIs. In this video, I'll teach you how to make API requests, get real-time data from APIs into your project. And at the end of this video, you also get access to a free website where you can get a lot of APIs to practice or to work with. Without much ado, let's get into it. So first of all, just fire up your favorite IDE. I'll be using Visual Studio Code for this one. And I'll just pull off my terminal and install the packages we'll be using. So first of all, let's just install request. Request is one of the most popular Python uh, package used for working with APIs. There are others though, but uh, mostly a lot of people use request. So we'll be using request for this particular tutorial. So I'll just do UV add. I'm using UV by the way, not pip. And I'll add the packages I want to install. So I'll install requests and hit enter on this. And this will add requests to um, my package. So yeah, for now, let's just add requests and that is enough. The next thing I'll do is to uh, go to uh, this website where I can get access to a lot of free api so i'll put the link to this particular website in the video description so do check it out yeah finny or something like that yeah so you can see we have a lot of apis here free apis you can work with so this gives you public apis and this is the endpoint you have another endpoint here it gives you facts about cats okay so there are a lot of them here and you can use any of them so in this tutorial, we'll start with this one and we'll continue to use other ones that gives us different formats of data. So let's begin with this particular one. So I'll copy this endpoint here. And in my uh, Visual Studio code, I'll just write endpoint or before even that, let's import request. Then this will be our endpoint. So I'll write endpoint is equal to that particular uh, API endpoint we've copied. All right, so the first thing, to note is that when working with APIs, you have to uh, make sure you put a lot of error handling mechanism in your code because you can make requests and then uh, the server will be down or you get a lot of errors returned to you. So make sure anytime you are working with APIs, you put that in a try and a set block. So we'll start by writing try. And then what we want to try is that we want to uh, make a request to that particular endpoint. And if you are working with the request library, all you need to type is request.get because you want to get some data. And then in here, you give it what your endpoint. So if you are saying, okay, request, get some data from this endpoint. And you are trying to get that because things can go wrong. And whatever we are getting, we will just store it in a variable called response. So response is equal to request get us this particular data. Okay, so request would do it best to get us the data. So in case we get a correct data, response will return some status code, which we know. So status code of uh, 200 means uh, we have gotten a successful uh, response. So first we have to check that. So we have to check if our response dot status code is equal to, let's say 200. That means you have made all right, we have gotten something. So if that is the case, then we'll convert whatever we are getting to a JSON format so that we can work with it. So what we would do is we'll do response.json, right? And this is our data that we are getting from the API. So I'll give this to our data is equal to what response.json. And then we can go ahead and print the data we are getting. So let's just print data. Okay. So if that is not the case where the response or the status code is not 200, that means we have, there are some hindrances on the way, okay? Making the request, we've got some hindrances. So if that is the case, I'll just write um, else, um, let me just do this on the one line. Else I'll just print whatever the status code to that particular request is. So I'll print error. And in here, I'll embed the status code. So I'll just do response.status code. And this will embed a particular status code I've gotten. So yeah, that's the first part. And I'll just come down here to uh, close my try block to accept request dot exceptions dot request exception. Here's it. And as E, then over here, I'm going to print that particular 
error we've gotten again. So if we try and we are not able, the step block is going to catch that particular error. So I'll just put error here and in here, I'll just embed that particular E error so that we can get it. Yeah, so with this, we can uh, try it out to see if we'll be able to fetch some data from this particular endpoint. So I'm going to run this. So I'll just click here to run this. And here we go. So we got some data. So, uh, you know, this point retains data about fats, fats about cats. So you can see uh, the key here is fat. And you can see the data we've got in some common house plants. Is it poisonous to cats? Include English IV, Iris, blah, blah, blah. So we got some data. And each time we run this, we should get something new. So you see, here we get the strongest climber among the big cats and so on. So uh, this API is working and it's retaining some data. So now let's grab the data. The key there is fat. So we can uh, just get the data or we can just even write if uh, we have parts in our data. So we can just write data. Then all we want to do is to print that particular data. So, so this will just print it this time around. So we are not getting anything uh, despite I'm running the code. Is it fats or parts? So let me see. Maybe it's fats. Let me remove the s and see save this rerun and here we go so you can see in contrast to dolls cats have not undergone major changes during the application process yeah so this is a fa some facts about cats and you can see how we are handling uh, this particular um, api well so in case you have some error you can see we'll be able to grab it and this is how easy you can see work with apis using uh the request library so this is like a get request we are making okay so let's try some other endpoints okay let's try some other endpoints that will give us different types of data so when you scroll down here okay they said this one gives you bitcoin price okay in real time uh we have this one also which gives you the nationality of a person to predict the nationality of a person based on their name okay so let's try this particular endpoint and see how it works. But I'll get back here, replace my endpoint with this one. And uh, so this one takes a name. So I'll just remove this name here. I'll remove this here. And what I'll do is to create a payload. So I'll call this payload. And this payload is will be equal to we have a key name and I'll give the value of my name. So just give it your name so that it predicts your nationality. So I'll give it my uh, last name, which is Nano. And over here, once I do request.get, I have to uh, add some parameters. So that my parameter here is my payload. And this is going to send this payload as my name and then uh, to that particular server. And the server will return my nationality. So for now, we don't know anything or the keys in that particular uh, response so we'll just print data for now and this will bring out my nationality so i'll close all this and run this again and let's see what we'll get all right so you can see the response we have count name which is now not all the payload i sent the country so okay country id is gh probability 62 percent sure the country ID GP. So yeah, it retains a whole lot of countries with their probabilities, right? So you can see GH, which stands for Ghana, has the highest uh, probability, which means uh, I'm from Ghana, which is true. So uh, this endpoint is working as well. Okay, it's working as well. So it, it retains a list of countries for you and the country with the highest probability is the one which you are from. So you can see how we can work with this by just sending the payload. So I'll just copy this particular endpoint so that I teach you how we can send a payload to also get a response from the API. The next one we'll be working with will be uh, some kind of image. So this endpoint returns what images, okay? So returns images of dogs. So anytime you send a request to this endpoint, you get a new image of a dog. So let's try that one out. So I'll replace this with this. And uh, now we don't need a payload. Just hit the endpoint and you get image of a dog. So 
we'll get rid of this and then we'll just uh, print whatever we are getting. Let me get rid of this and let me run this. Yeah, so you can see we got a key message and this is an image of a dog. So if I should open this, it will open my browser and you can see we got an image of a dog. So we can grab that image and visualize it. For that, uh, we need some couple of libraries. Let's use, let's say, matplotlib. So UV add, let's add matplotlib so that we can use it to uh, visualize the images. So I'll import matplotlib. In these libraries, we can grab the images and uh, visualize them as well. Okay, so let me close this up. So we make request to this particular endpoint. If the response status code, if, if it's 200, that means we have gotten some data and we'll be ready to work with that data. So um, once again, let me print the data. All right, and we got the image and the key called message. So yeah, that that would be good. So now let's grab this particular URL so that we can make requests to get and download this particular image. So what I will do is uh, we'll do if there is a data, then I will get my image URL. This image URL will be data dot get I'm going to get message. I will quickly print image URL to see if I'm getting the image URL. So I'll run this again. Yeah, so you can see I'm perfectly grabbing the image URL. So once I have this image URL, what I'll do is to make another request, okay? I'll use request again to download that particular image from the URL. So I'll do image response, okay? And this image response is equal to request.get. And what am I getting? Now I'm getting the image URL. So I'm getting the image from that particular URL. And once I get that image now, I can uh, go ahead and visualize the image. So what I'll, I'll do is to also come down here and say, okay, my image is equal to my image, which is the microplotlib image dot im read. And over here, I'm going to pass the bytes IO, pass the image response here dot content. One thing, don't forget to add the format of the image. So format we don't know the format of the image so i'll just pass auto here all right so once you are able to get this image then we can use matplotlib to show this image we can do plt dot im show and in here you can pass your image i come down here and just do plt dot show and this will go ahead and show the images for you so yeah this is what we are going to do so if there is no data then we can also do else we can print no data available yeah so i'm putting all these particular error catching statements here because when working with apis you have to make sure uh you put in a lot of uh error handling in so that you don't actually uh, mess things up because sometimes the server can be down the server will return nothing so you have to make sure you put you factor all those things in Let's run this and see if we can grab an image and show that particular image using my plugin. So we've got the URL, which is working. And here we go, guys. So you can see we got the image, right? We've got the image. So yeah, we got the image. We are showing it using matplotlib. You can quickly save it here if you want. So you can see how easy it is. And each time you run this, it makes a new request, gives you another image, and it's very, very nice. So we are grabbing these images from what the API online. And this is how easy it is, especially when you are using the request uh, library. Anyway, this dog looks nice though. When you are using the request library, okay? And you are not limited to only getting, okay? You can also post. Based on your endpoint, you can do what? Request.post. You can do request.foot uh, and all those things there. So request.post is also available whereby you post some data you can also do request.put which is also the request.delete so you can 
handle all of this using the request library okay so with the request library you can be able to achieve all of this so uh it's very easy to do just make sure my advice is you handle all uh, the possible errors that can be returned as well so that you don't mess things up so this is how easy you can work with what apis in python i hope you found this video helpful also i'll make sure I leave the link to the resources in this video in the description, especially the link to this particular website where you are going to get a lot of APIs to work with. Anyways, let me know what you think about this particular video in the comment section. Also, make sure you like this video, share it with others so that we grow this community together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.